Welcome back. Well, we have Dr. T here, also known as Dr. Timorian, who is here on behalf of Harvard Eye Associates. Well, welcome back. Nice to see you. Thank you again for having me. How is everyone today? Everyone is good, and we Great. appreciate you taking the time because we know how busy you guys are over there. And, you know, glaucoma is an unfortunate thing that we mm -hmm. seem to all deal with as we get older. Yeah. And uh, you have lots of doctors there, and you're here to talk about um, specifically interventional glaucoma. Yeah. You know, tell me just a little bit about glaucoma and, and why so many of us suffer from it. Yeah, I think that's a good way to start. You know, glaucoma is really a plumbing issue in your eye. That's when the pressure of the eye is too high, it damages the fragile nerve in the back of your eye. Mm -hmm. But in terms of thinking about treatment options now and in the future, the question is, what's the real problem? Mm -hmm. Well, think of your eye like a faucet and a drain. The faucet's on, you're creating this fluid inside of your eye, which you need to make. That's what nourishes the inside of your eye. Mm -hmm. It's just the drainage system is clogged. Okay. So the question is, can we come up with good ways so we can figure out how do we create the fluid but also exit the fluid well? Mm. In glaucoma, there's a buildup of that fluid. And as that fluid builds up, much like a basketball, the eye is overinflated. Mm -hmm. It damages other structures in your eye, that being the optic nerve. The optic nerve is what relays information from your eye to your brain. If you have okay. enough nerve damage, then it affects your vision. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, so at what point would you start to feel or notice something? Like It sounds to me like you could do something ahead of time if you get to it uh, quick enough. That's a great question. The problem here is glaucoma, has, we like to call it the silent thief of vision. Mm. If you wait until you feel like you're not seeing well, it's already very late in the progress. That's actually one of the most concerning things that I see when a patient comes in, they're already saying, hey, I'm not seeing well. Mm. That really scares me because that's already moderate or severe glaucoma. Okay. Really the best way to take care of it, as you said, is proactively, but you're not gonna know that. Okay. So really what you need to do is just make sure you have regular eye exams. And in the eye exams, there are several things that we look at to make sure you don't have it. Okay. And if you do, then we get you started on treatment earlier so you never get it. So the way I always think about it is like someone coming into the ER with very high blood pressure, they may not know the blood pressure is high, but you don't want to wait for them to have a heart attack before you treat it. But most people don't know their pressures are high. That's why a routine eye exam is important for everyone. Right, because you check for glaucoma every single visit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do, our ophthalmology colleague, our optometry colleagues do. The most important thing here is getting your eyes checked to make sure we don't miss anything. A little bit of earlier intervention makes a significant difference at the end of life. And which, which exam do you do for glaucoma now? That's a good question. There's a lot of things kind of put together. The most common thing people think about is just checking the pressure of your eye, but that's only one component. It's like putting a big puzzle together. All the puzzle pieces have to fit together to get you the big image. Mm -hmm. So there's other things that we do besides checking the pressure. We also look at the nerve in the back of the eye. We do some scanning to measure the nerve thickness. Oh, okay. And we do what we call the torture test. It's a peripheral field test where patients come in and do a little clicking game for me. Oh, that isn't so bad. Uh, what is the one where they used to blow the, the um, air into your eye? Yeah, that's one version of checking pressure. Okay. Some people still do that more. The standard has changed to a blue light. Oh, so I there's see. no puffing of air. So frequently okay. I have patients waiting to get that puff of air, but it never comes through. Oh, that's yeah. good because before you'd be like, oh, we're always shocked when it happens. Yes. So yes. I think that was a good thing that you guys changed it to yeah. the blue light. That sounds good. Now, of course, we talked a little bit about, you know, being reactive and proactive. So, of course, reactive is maybe too late, yeah. but proactive, like you mentioned, is coming in. Now, now I know you have lots of uh, different doctors that are available. Now you have the surgeon side and then you have the exam side. Mm -hmm. So what should someone do if they um, are looking into uh, a different type of eye uh, exam? Yeah, really what we're trying to do is figure out a better way of treating glaucoma. You know, we're all very focused on preventing vision loss and certainly our patients don't want to lose their vision. Mm -hmm. But you would think a simple solution like using eye drops for glaucoma would work. Because if you ask 100 glaucoma patients, how do you treat glaucoma, they say glaucoma drops. But it's not as simple as that. There's lots of barriers that actually get in the way of patients simply getting their drops in. Mm -hmm. Costs, side effects, remembering them, putting them in. Mm -hmm. Patients simply don't get their drops in even though we're trying to protect their vision. And they're doing the best that they can too. So we want to be more proactive. Well, is there some way we can provide pressure lowering that doesn't necessarily require eye drop therapy? Mm -hmm. And that's where interventional glaucoma sort of kind of comes into play. Okay. Is there different ways of delivering the medicine or getting the pressure down, working on that plumbing issue that would work? One object would be like doing, instead of you putting an eye drop in your eye, we can actually insert a small pellet of medicine in your eye that dissolves and gives you the medicine over time. Huh. So it's almost like a little antacid in the eye that's okay. full of glaucoma medicine. Okay. It just sits in your eyes, dissolving over time. 
So that takes the place or minimizes the amount of drops a patient has to put in, makes their life a lot easier, plus it gives us much better control of the glaucoma. Now what is that called? That's called Darista. Okay. It's actually just the same molecule commonly used in glaucoma drops, but just has a different name because it's an actual injection in your eye. Huh. Now most patients kind of squirm and they say, gosh, that yeah. doesn't sound great, I don't want an injection. Trust me, it's painless. You know, just like when we check the pressure with the blue light, patients don't feel it. Mm -hmm. We have the area numbed up, and once the medicine goes in, it just sits there and dissolving. Can you see it in the eye or no? It's very small. You have to use a microscope to see it. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're talking about a millimeter in length okay. that as soon as it goes in the eye, actually starts degrading. It turns into oh. something a lot smaller than a millimeter. It usually lasts over a very long period of time. And where do you inject it? Like uh, which part of the eye? Through the clear part of your eye. Oh, okay. So for people who've commonly had cataract surgery, there's a couple of incisions placed on your eye. Oh, okay. Use a similar incision site, much, much smaller. So it will sit in front of the colored part of your eye, but behind the transparent front part of your eye. That's great. Is this something new? It's been out for several years now, okay. but it's gradually gaining more and more momentum as we go. And there's a couple of photos here that you'll see. Yeah. If wow. you actually look at the photo on the right, down below, you'll notice that little spherical thing. That's mm -hmm. sitting right there, that's the little pellet. And on the left is actually a special view we have to actually look at the drainage system of your eye. Yeah. The drainage system right, is a special place. You can't just visualize it directly, almost like a carved rear view mirror. You have to use right. a mirror to look back there. That image there on the left shows you that rear view view and that little pellet sitting there kind of doing hmm. its thing. So much yeah. like an antacid, sits and dissolves and gives you medicine. So whether it's two o'clock in the morning, two o'clock at night, you're actively getting your medication. Right, and you don't yeah. have to think about it, which is a really nice thing to have. Yeah. So now did you say this is, how long has this been around? It's been available for several years now. Oh, okay, yeah. and you've been using this in office for a while? Yeah, we also integrate okay. this with other things that we can do besides drops, which would be a laser therapy we can probably talk about on a different uh, segment. Okay. You can actually figure out, why is the patient really on drops? Maybe there's a better way of doing it so we can really help our patients. Yeah. The primary focus we really want here is how do we improve quality of life? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we just want our patients to be happy. We want them seeing well. We want them to get them to a good place with the least intervention as possible. Mm -hmm. And just standard of care wise, it used to be drops, but now with the advent of these new procedures and technologies, we're thinking of it a different way. It's just a matter of how do we manage the patients. Yeah. Well, it's getting, it's getting better and better, the technology. Yeah. And you guys are always on the cutting edge. So. Yeah, well, we appreciate uh, taking care of you guys always. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. If you want more information about anything that we have discussed, you can always go to harvardeye.com or you can call them at 949-951-2020. We'll be right back.